So included as an example of biochemical um, explanation for crime uh, is uh, the killing of Harvey Milk. There was a movie that was actually made by that title, Milk, and it starred Sean Penn, who played uh, Harvey Milk, who was San Francisco's first openly gay elected official. Um, he was elected to city supervisor in 1978. Um, or a couple of years before that, but he was killed in 1978, along with the mayor of San Francisco at the time, George Moscone. And the man that killed them both was a man named Dan White, and he blamed his consumption of junk food, namely Twinkies, as the reason why he uh, committed murder. He said that it made him act more erratically and violent because he had been consuming too much sugar. So it became known famously as the Twinkie uh, defense. So let's move into neurological explanations for crime. So here we look at this idea that criminals often suffer brain damage or impairment, which causes them to become violent criminals. If you remember the film that I showed you in class, The Mind of a Serial Killer, the case of Arthur Shawcross, the uh, Rochester Strangler, they called him. He was responsible for the murders of 11 sex workers in um Rochester, New York in the, um, I believe, late 1970s, uh, early to mid-1980s. And uh, Arthur Shawcross, um, the psychiatrist that examined him said that there was a cyst in, his, uh, in the frontal lobe of his brain, which caused him to act out erratically. So this is what we're talking about when we talk about neurological explanations, impaired brain chemistry. So there are numerous studies that confirm a link between the impairment of brain functioning, such as memory, reasoning, problem-solving, motor skills, and aggressive behavior. And there, of course, are some examples of what they use as empirical uh, scientific support for this connection between impaired brain and criminal behavior. So here's some evidence of neurological explanations. ADHD, which I mentioned in the previous slide. Now, I know we were talking about biochemical. So there's one group of uh, scientists that believe that ADHD can be traced to an impairment in diet, but it is also still a reflection of an impaired brain functioning that can be either organic, meaning the child may have been born with ADHD, or it could be a, a lack of a, a nutritional balanced diet early in life. But again, ADHD is linked to impulsivity, hyperactivity, bullying, and discipline issues. So kids that have um, ADHD oftentimes are um, behavioral uh, problems in the classroom and also in the family. And then brain chemistry in and of itself, uh, low levels of dopamine. So dopamine is that chemical uh, that releases serotonin to the brain, which makes you feel good. If you've ever woke up in the morning and, and felt, wow, you know, I really feel good. I don't know what's going on. I'm just in a really great mood. That is because dopamine um, in your brain is releasing serotonin, which makes you feel better. But when people have low levels of dopamine, then it causes them to feel depressed or aggressive. Um, they found that people that consume or use crack cocaine or even meth, the reason why these people tend to be uh, unpredictable when it comes to, to aggressive behavior is because of what this drug is doing. It's, it's, it's uh, burning out the receptor cells in the brain that produce dopamine and serotonin. And then finally, arousal theory. There are some people who like to live on the edge. They're thrill seekers. Well, there's a chemical um, issue going on in the brain where they to feel alive or to feel excited in a day, they have to put themselves in risky situations. So they're thrill seekers. They um, like to like ride every kind of roller coaster, bungee jump, and do things like that. Now, it doesn't mean that because you like to leap out of airplanes and stuff like that, that you'll be a violent criminal. But people that have that chemistry, that, that, that chemical imbalance where they need to feel alive, they need to feel sensations of arousal. Um, that's also been found in people who uh, commit crimes for the thrill of it. So there are some people that harm others just for the thrill. They call them thrill killers. There was a rather famous case locally in Michigan where two homeless men uh, that were kind of loved and, and, and known in the community of Pontiac uh, were beat to death um, 
in the span of two nights, uh, there was a group of teenage boys who were going around killing these homeless men just because they wanted to know what it was like to kill someone. So they found that people that seek excitement this way have um, had that brain chemistry of arousal theory. They need to feel aroused. So they seek high uh, levels of sensation um, in order for them to feel um, feel good. So they, they, they commit crime out of, uh, uh, you know, for the thrill of it.